The purpose of this screencast lecture is to explain the venerable mailbox rule. So what's the basic rule? The acceptance of a contract is effective when the offeree dispatches notice of acceptance by mail. An important caveat is that the notice must be properly addressed with sufficient postage. That's in Restatement Section 66. One corollary follows immediately from the mailbox rule itself. An offeree may not revoke after mailing notice of acceptance because the contract has already been formed. Somewhat less obviously, when an offeror attempts to revoke her offer, the revocation is effective only when the offeree receives the notice of revocation. But the offeror need not mail the revocation. She can use the telephone or another more immediate means of communication. It's worth asking why we have the mailbox rule rather than an anti-mailbox rule that would make acceptance effective on receipt. One legitimate concern is that the offeror might speculate on price fluctuations, for example, during the time it takes for an acceptance to arrive. That's what the restatement comment is talking about. The mailbox rule, based on sending the acceptance, allows the offeree to speculate by mailing and then recalling an acceptance. An anti-mailbox rule, based on receiving the acceptance, would allow the offeror to speculate by mailing and then recalling a revocation. So the problem is more or less symmetric under the two possible rules. We really just need a clear rule. I believe we would do well to reject some commentators' calls for a more complex rule that would make enforcement depend on contextual factors. Let me conclude with a bit of practical advice. How can a party prevent speculation when that might be a danger? Well, the solution is pretty simple. Offers, revocations of offers, and acceptances can now be transmitted instantaneously. Offerors can insist on acceptance by email or fax or phone. They can also impose short time limits on acceptance. The only potential problem with this approach is the statute of frauds writing requirement for certain contracts. We'll study this in more detail later. For example, fax was quite controversial when I was in law school. It was back in the day. Stone tablets were more the norm but we see increasing judicial acceptance of these methods over time. And today, web-based order systems and electronic markets like stock exchanges allow for instantaneous transactions. Even so, occasionally, cases turn on understanding the mailbox rule. And that's all you need to know about the rule for now. Thanks for listening.